Data is the oil of the 21st century. Hands up, who all has heard this quote before? Right, okay, hands up, keep your hands up. If, who has seen this in a headline? Right, okay, now who has seen this at a conference they've attended in the last year? Right, fair number of hands. This is like the most hackneyed phrase in all of uh, data science right now. Let's admit it, we get that data is valuable. Everybody here knows that data is valuable or you wouldn't be here and your companies wouldn't have sent you here. We all get that data is tradable. We also probably get that data is internationally fraught. All those things make intuitive sense to those of us in this room. But there's some things that data aren't. Data is not fungible. The source matters. The content matters. It's not like oil. It's not just all about commoditization of the same thing over and over again in different volumes. So it may just be that oil will remain the oil of the 21st century. I don't know. But to me, that quote doesn't really capture the significance of what you all are doing here and what you can do with these new skills. Now, if you really want to nail it, if you really want to find a quote that I think gets at some of the implications here, you actually have to go farther back to Arthur C. Clarke. And he has this quote that I've been thinking a lot about recently. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Now, yesterday I was on Capitol Hill, and when I was there, someone at the hearing called for a day that we can look forward to when the nation's workers would all be one with machines, where we'd be able to hire devices that would make us super strong, which apparently we can do, that we'd be able to visualize things far, far away from us, which we can also do, and maybe that we'd have the ability to know everything in just an instant, no matter how complex. We are not quite there yet, to be clear, but take that example, okay, the matrix, which we are not quite to yet. Try to consider what your iPhone or your Nexus phone that's in your pocket right now, what would that have looked like from the lens of more than just a few years? more than the lens of just the last five and the last 10 when the iPhone had been invented. Consider the lens of what that device and its power would look like to someone in 1800 or 1850 or 1900 or even 1950. Would they all just see that smartphone as a more sophisticated rotary dial phone? Which I actually bet there are a number of people in here that don't even know what a rotary dial phone is. Uh, and I barely do myself. What about those people who were around before the phone was invented? What would that device be to them? Would they see Wikipedia as just another series of books, an incredibly large and easily edited series of books, so books written in pencil? Would they consider apps to be just another hammer or just another calculator? except for the calculator app, which they would see as a calculator because it's a calculator, um, but they might see that as an advanced slide rule. Uh, in reality, they'd probably see none of that. They'd probably see something they couldn't analogize to, something that they couldn't relate to, something they couldn't understand, something that might just be a little numinous. And after all, what they're seeing is something that is infused by a power that they do not understand with an intelligence that exceeds not only their own, but that of every single person in their lives and with an ability to perform operations that they can't see on systems that they can't relate to. In other words, if you step just three or four generations back with all the power at our fingertips today, those devices, those tools, they might not just simply be unintelligible, they might look a little bit like magic. So today, of course, today's general public gets it. They understand more or less how at least the tools, like iPhones in their pocket, work, or their cell phone, but not, I would argue, with data platforms. Data platforms offer something different. Because understanding all of those advances that we use today, all the guts of the iPhone, all the services that we rely on, those do depend on data platforms. Those data platforms that connect information faster than any human, that process it faster than any human can, and that can deliver insights that predict human behavior better than we as humans can predict our own behavior ourselves. These are data tools that, to those of us inside this room, make a lot of sense. They're perfectly wieldable. They are manipulable tools. But what about for those outside the room? For those outside this room, those tools, as they become increasingly complex, are beginning to look increasingly like a kind of magic. Technology that works in ways that they can't understand, on data with which they are not familiar and might not even know has been collected about them, and producing outcomes that in some cases they're not even equipped to scrutinize. 